Hey guys and welcome to today's video. I am feeling so happy even though it's really grey outside. But today's video has been requested from quite a few people including some people at work and mainly and specifically the lovely Vitisha. I thought that this was a good idea because I've been doing a couple of makeup tutorials but I haven't yet done a basic slash quick tutorial that you can do just before you go out when you're in a rush. So I thought it would be a great idea to do that today. Now most of the products I am using are all affordable and are all high street, most of them. I think there's about one thing that isn't. It's just an easy everyday look and I hope you find this video useful. It's a bit of a scary world, the makeup world, so I thought this would be good for our channel and for you guys as well. I hope you enjoy this video and I don't have anything else to say other than let's get this video started. Enjoy! The first thing you do is get as much hair from out of your face because you do not want foundation-y, makeup-y hair. <laughs> you don't want your hair to get any makeup in it, so I'm just gonna clip that back. I mean, I'm not like a banana, but what can you do? So first off, you need a base for your face. Now, I'm gonna be using my Holy Grail, and you've probably seen this so many times, the Simple Kind to Skin Replenishing Rich Moisturiser. And if I don't use this, then I use a face primer, which is either normally the MAC face primer, or the Soap and Glory face primer. I just think a primer is a good way to keep your makeup on all day. If you're going somewhere nice, then use a primer. But if you need, if your skin needs a bit of healthiness and a bit of softness, then I totally would recommend a moisturizer to put on your face before you put any foundation on. So just gonna rub that in. Now next you need a foundation of your choice. I've gone through so many different foundations and I am currently exploring different brands and the one that I am using at the minute is the NYX Stay Matte but not flat foundation. I've had this one for a while, I'm actually trying to use it up. It's not my favourite but it is, it is good. I don't recommend it for people with dry skin because it does flake up a little bit. I do love the coverage of this foundation. So yeah, if you do suffer from dry skin, then I do recommend the Max Factor Lasting Perfection. It is one of my favourite foundations this year. I absolutely love it. I'm so glad I found it because I love the colour payoff and I love just how moisturising it is for my skin. You can apply your foundation three different ways and I used to apply my foundation with my fingers when I was in school and I didn't know much about makeup and so over time I got into using brushes. I absolutely love applying it with a brush. This one especially which is the Real Techniques face brush or I can't remember what it's called but I'll link it below. It's absolutely one of my favourite brushes to use. Or the other thing I recommend is a sponge and I've just applied a little dot or splodge. But yeah the reason why I recommend a sponge is that it evenly distributes over your face. You don't get that streakiness that you do with a brush sometimes and my brushes do need a bit of a clean and this sponge does as well. So I just dot a bit all over my face, got a stray hair there and then just dab I guess. Dab is a foundation into your skin. I do recommend a sponge with this particular foundation as well because again with the brush it does give a bit of streakiness to it and it flakes up any kind of like dry skin but my skin's doing quite well today just have a few spots which I do have now and again you want to blend it under the chin just so you don't get that really fine line that some people get and you just, oh, it's, I just feel like it's embarrassing when you have that line constantly just <laughs> rubbing it into my neck. I just love the application of a sponge. I haven't yet tried a beauty blender. I really want to try one, but I haven't yet done it. Mm. 
one thing about this foundation, it is a, it's a tiny bit dark for my skin, um, but the best way to check that the foundation you're thinking of purchasing is the same colour as your skin tone, like basically to match your foundation with your skin. It's just to test a little bit of the foundation just on that little webbed bit between your thumb and your index finger. That's probably the palest part of your hand. Or if you haven't got any foundation on the, on the day that you're testing it in the straw, just put a little bit in your face and just kind of like rub it into your skin. If it blends in like instantly, then it's the colour for you. If it, if it looks too light, then it's not for you. And if it looks too dark or it looks slightly dark or it takes a while for it to kind of, you know, look like your skin, then it's not the right colour for you. That's the best tip I can give you on foundation. It just... But you can tell this is slightly a little bit dark on my face, but it's only a little bit dark, so I can get away with it. The next step is a concealer and the one that I have been using quite a lot is the Flawless Light Reflecting Concealer by Barry M. I really like this, it does the job in reflecting the light but if you go into Boots or Superjug and you want a good concealer I totally recommend the Collection Lasting Perfection Concealer absolutely love that and I seriously need to get another one. What I normally do with my concealer is either do three kind of like stripes like that like like whiskers and then just kind of just kind of do a lot of so it's kind of like this triangle you see it comes down to the nose and then kind of reaches the end of the eye the outer corner of the eye, the outer corner of the eye um, that's basically the area you want to conceal I mean because I'm a person who wears glasses I have really dark under eye circles because that's what glasses do to people like me so yeah so you just want to kind of draw a triangle with your concealer it doesn't have to look neat at the minute don't panic this is not going to look like this afterwards this is just applying it and then what you want to do is get a concealer brush or a brush that i use as a concealer this one is the real techniques contour brush and yeah i'm going to use this sometimes i use the sponge but i'm going to use this for the sake of this video and you're just blending it in you're just kind of brushing it away from the eye dab it towards the inner corner of the eye that's probably the best thing to do around that area what concealer is also good for is hiding any blemishes or spots and in this case i have a big one that is nearly healed up actually, a big one on the end of my nose, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of concealer on that, and then there's a few down here, I do have a little couple spots up here, going to blend that in over those, blendy blend. Step four, you need to be able to set your foundation because you do not want to go out to work or anywhere else with kind of this glowy, sticky foundation. It almost feels like you've got something on your face and you just need to wash it off. But you want it to feel comfortable on your skin. So the next step, step four, is getting a setting powder. And you can get so many different of these powders by so many different brands. But this one is the Rimmel London Stay Matte pressed powder. This is just the perfect kind of powder that I have been using for work pretty much every day. It is a very good powder and I am using the Real Techniques blush brush. Now you're thinking why are you using a blush brush for powder? I just don't really like this. I think it's too big for my cheeks so I use it for my powder. I'm just gonna swirl that, tap the excess powder off because you might not want all of that cake in your face. And then you're just going to literally brush it everywhere. And just, just keep on going until you feel like your face is fully matted up. Step five is some kind of blush. I absolutely love sleek blushes. So if you want an affordable blush, I think these are around about four or five pounds. But they are so good. They are so pigmented. And trust me. This is how good they are because I have quite a few of them. But today I'm going to be using the Rose Glow 
Illuminating Palette by Revlon. I absolutely love this, especially in the summer and especially for everyday wear. The reasons I love this is because not only does it have kind of like these blush shades in the middle, but it also has kind of this bronze shade and then this kind of like highlighting shade. And the reason I love this is because when I'm in a rush or want to apply my makeup really quickly, this is like an all-in-one blush bronzer and highlighter and it just creates this gorgeous glow on my cheeks. I'm going to be using this Luxie brush. This is probably the only product in this video that isn't drugstore, um, but I only have two blush brushes and they're both kind of like high-end. I'm just going to dab this in a couple of times, whack that off and then just brush that blush in kind of like a diagonal just on the tops of the cheekbones. The good thing about the good thing about this blush is that it's buildable. So you can apply as little as you want or as much as you want. It's entirely up to you. Now as you can see, this illuminating blush palette is creating a highlight, which is why I love this palette because I don't have to put two different products on. It's just going on all in one go and it's just quick and easy and I just love the colour that this Revlon blush illuminating palette gives. It's just so gorgeous. You can smile. Applying blush is probably the happiest part of <laughs> applying makeup because you're smiling to get those cheeks. Now you'll notice I don't go too close to my nose because I don't want the pink to go as far as there. Otherwise, I think I look like a clown if I do that, <laughs> but blend near there so it kind of has like an end point, but it's invisible. Now, sometimes what I then go and do is get the powder again and just kind of blend under the blush just so it doesn't have a really fine line. Just to give you a more natural look. Now, you could stop here or you could just keep on going, but I'm gonna keep on going because I love to apply some eyeshadow for an everyday basic look. You're probably gonna think, oh no, 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 eyeshadows, they take too long or I can't get it right or whatever, but the best eyeshadow that I can recommend to anyone who is starting out in makeup is eyeshadow pencils. The reason why I say this is because Sometimes you just don't have time to put on a powder and start all the blending and the, the kind of transition, but I do recommend getting some pencils because you literally just apply it and then blend it. And I'm just gonna show you this now. Mine all need sharpening. I'm gonna go for the bronzy one. This is Scandalize by Rimmel and the shade is called Bluffing number 11. These are all 24 hour and waterproof, which is a plus if you're working outdoors. So I'm simply just going to apply this, start in the crease, and then just whack it on all over your eye. So this one's kind of like a, a silvery beigey shade. Doesn't matter how bad this looks at the minute because we're gonna sort it out later, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, whoa, -ho -ho. what's going on there? Next, you want to take a blending brush, and I'm going to be using the Eco Tools. This is the double ended brush, and I'm going to be using this fluffy end. These brushes can come in a two set, which is what I originally did pick them up as they were originally a two set. What you want to do is just blend the outside of that shade. That means swirling the brush in a circular motion if you can and that is just getting rid of that fine dodgy line. It's not really a fine line, it's more of a dodgy line of the eyeshadow. Next I'm gonna do my mascara. Now drugstore mascaras, I love the Maybelline mascaras I have done for so long and my absolute favourite is this Last Sensational Mascara. You've probably seen me use it in the past. Um, the other one that I absolutely love came out last year I think and this one's called the Falsies Push Up Drama and that's also 
really good. But I'm going to use my Holy Grail. So I've already done one eye. I'm going to do the other eye. Just a couple of strokes on the ends of the eyelashes and then kind of brush from the root upwards. And I love this scar because it's almost like you don't need a eyelash curler. And then finally I am going to use a lipstick. This lipstick is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Abu Dhabi and this is like the perfect kind of nude with a bit of peach pink tone to it. So again, perfect for every day. And I love these applicators rather than an actual lipstick when I'm in a hurry because I can get it on really easily and pretty much perfect every time when I'm in a rush. Try to angle the brush in the way of your, in the shape of the lips. Don't constantly go along like this because eventually you're gonna get kind of like a weird line, but just think about how the brush is shaped. Most people want to accentuate the top of their lips. This is where the cupid's bow falls. I can't get my words out today, this is so bad. I can't get my words out any day, frankly. But again, you want to follow the line of your cupid's bow. So the best way to do this and to get a perfect line is to do an X on the top of your lips. So like this. You see how I followed the line but did an X? No, it's a tip and a rule that I've followed every time I apply my lipstick. And again, I'm applying lipstick without my glasses on. <laughs> I always somehow forget to put my glasses on. So, that is the finished look. You have your foundation, your powder, your concealer, your blush, your mascara, and your lips. And if you're feeling adventurous, put a bit of eyeshadow on as well. I'm going to put my glasses on because I can put them on now. <laughs> yeah. Let's just take that pin out and sort out my hair. I'm going to zoom you out because you don't need to be that close anymore. But as you can see, this is just a plain everyday look, a basic look for all you newbies and for all you people who need a quick and easy makeup look in the mornings before you go to work or before you go out whatever it's just simple it's not too out there and it's, it takes about 10 minutes um if you want more tips on how to do other parts of the makeup like contour bronzer highlighting or your eyebrows anything you're interested in i'd be happy to make a video on that but that is the end of this video if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel and comment below i love you guys and i will see you again soon bye but today's video is but today's oh my gosh i've been doing a couple of mus music music at the access the access the access oh. Joy to the world. I don't know why I'm singing a Christmas song. Yeah, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go, and I'm just a bit of a a bit of a crackpot today.